Some of you are in a storm that is challenging everything that you've ever believed. And God said, the storm's not going to stop yet, but I'll give you peace immediately. The storm is not going to subside yet. Yeah, you're still going to have to go through marriage counseling. And yeah, you're still going to have to take your children to therapy. And yeah, you're still going to have to go back and build your credit. And yeah, you're still going to have to stay in that small apartment and you're not going to get the house yet. And yeah, you're still going to have to catch the bus. And yeah, but I will be your peace in the middle of the storm. Today, we have decided that as a church, we're going to be anchored. And um, last week, we decided that it's not safer in the shallow. And we decided that we were not going to be kiddie pool Christians anymore. And we decided that we were going to be ones that were destined for the deep. Somebody needs to write that down. I'm destined for the deep. Yeah, write that down because some of you have been putting a limit on what God could do with your life, but you are destined for the deep. Somebody say that one more time. I'm destined for the deep. And I found a scripture that, that parallels this perfectly. So if you're going into deep waters, if you're going past your comfort zone, if God's taking you beyond the place that you've been, I want you to know that God promises that he will be with you. Look at Isaiah 43 verse 2 as an anchor scripture. Look what it says. When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. Do you know what kind of encouragement that is? That when God tells you to step out in crazy faith and start the business and now you're in the deep, God says, if you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. It reminds me of another scripture that says, if God be for us, who? Who can be against us? And too many of us are so caught up in who's not for us when we're not looking at who, who is with us. You missed it. You want somebody to be for you and you forgot who's with you. There are more times than not that everybody around you will not co-sign the thing that God has said in your life. But it doesn't matter who's for you if you don't, or who's for you if you don't remember who's with you. And if we're going to the deep, somebody said, I'm going to the deep. Then we have to be ones that remember when I go through deep waters, God says, I'll be with you. When I go through rivers of difficulty, you look at the encouragement will not drown. If God said it and he's with you and you can't swim, you will not drown. Drown. Somebody just prophetically say that over your life. I will not drown as long as God is with me. Say it again. I will not drown as long as God is with me. Let's say it in the inverse. I will drown if God isn't. Now, my question to you is how many things are you saying God is with you in that he's nowhere to be found? And could the drowning that's happening in your life relationally, the drowning that's happening financially, the drowning that's happening even emotionally, could it be because God is not with you in that? One thing I found out a long time ago is God does not co-sign things that he doesn't say. If it's not in his word and if he did not give prophetic utterance to that thing, he is not jumping on your vision board making that stuff happen. If you have not sought him about what his plan is for your life. And so our encouragement should be and our admonishment should be we need to figure out where God is because if God's with us, we will not drown. And it says when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. I just want everybody to know that deep is where we will dwell all year. I'm just telling you right now, and some people are like, what is the deep, Pastor Mike? It's deeper than where you are now. <laughs> so if you feel like you have a prayer life now, deeper. If you feel like your relationship is good now, deeper. If you feel like you love people good now that don't feel the same way you feel about the political things that are going on and you feel like you're doing a good job, deeper. If you are one that doesn't really watch all the stuff that it entices your senses and all that other stuff and God's saying it's good to just reflect it, but now I need you to be one to help other people out of the same situation that you now have overcome. I'm calling you 
deeper. So all I wanted to tell you is welcome to the deep. Like, 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 like for the rest of the year, do not be frustrated if it doesn't feel secure. You're in the deep. They're missing it. I'm trying to give you the, 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 the code to be able to be okay this year. It won't feel comfortable and you won't be in control. That's how you know you're in the deep. You see how little the claps are getting? Because this is the part where people want to know, what are we doing in March, God? What are we doing in February, God? God, give me a word for, for, for May. And God says, yeah, hold on. Hold on, because you have now entered the deep. I'm going to give you my first point, and it's a little unconventional, but this is something that you're going to have to get used to saying all year in every aspect of your life. First point of today, you're going to say, so we out here. <laughs> you missed it. You thought it was going to be a deep thing, but God's going to call you to places that all you'll be able to say is not, oh, I've done this before. Oh, I've seen this before. Oh, I know what happens next. Oh, that's how that's gonna work out. The only thing you're gonna be able to say is, so we out here. <laughs> God, you're calling me to lead a small group. So we out here. God, you're calling me to start writing a devotional and I don't even got nobody to read it. So we out here. Say, so this is the most spiritual point some of y'all could ever have. So we out here is going to be your crazy faith statement of 2021. Oh, I feel that thing right there. That you're going to begin to obey God and do things. Do you know every week I come to this organization and I have a meeting with Bree, our chief of staff, and God tells us to do stuff and we're looking at different things and going through budgets and all that. And somewhere in the meeting, we look at each other and say, Bree, so we out here. There's no, there are people dependent on us staying in the same place of hearing God's voice. It was small five years ago, six years ago, and it didn't impact that much. But now it's impacting thousands. What do we do when we don't know what to do? So we out here. And if you make this your prophetic anthem of 2021, it is your faith speaking that if God was gracious enough to trust you to go to the deep, he will be good enough to sustain you in the deep. Somebody shout at me, so we out here? Y'all ain't even say it like y'all meant it. Somebody say, so we out here? It don't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter if you have the finances. We out here. It doesn't matter who comes. It doesn't matter who goes. It doesn't matter if I don't have it. We out here. I'm out here in the day, 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 day. I said, I'm out here in the day, 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 woo, day. Y'all help me say, say, I'm out here in the day, whoa, day, day, whoa, the day, day. Nobody understands I'm out here in the day, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all help me. I feel this thing. I said, we out here in the deep, 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 uh, the deep, deep, deep. My family's out here in the deep, yeah, deep, deep, oh, the deep, deep. Transformation Nation out here in the deep, whoa, 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 whoa. I ain't got the money, but I'm in the deep, whoa. Just one more, they can leave me, but I'll be out in the deep. Oh. We're out here in the deep. Somebody give God. Oh, if you're going to be in the deep this year, I dare you to give God some praise. So all I want to say to you is welcome to the deep. No, 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 y'all don't understand. I said welcome to the deep. I'm in the deep. 
We out here. I'm in the deep. You know what the deep is? The deep is lonely. The deep is isolated. The deep is not where you find the crowd. The deep is where you find the committed. Welcome to the deep. This is a prophetic picture of the rest of 2021. Your friends can't save you out here. (laughs) People that don't hear from God don't stay in the deep. What, What are you saying, Pastor Mike? If you're committing to the deep in 2021... You're going to have to make sure you have an what? Anchor. Oh. So we can't just be deep. We have to be prepared for the deep. Why would God give us the word to be anchored in 2021? Call us to the deep. And then we're supposed to just drift out here? God said, no, 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 no. I need you to come to the deep, but I'm going to anchor you myself. And I, I, I don't like just saying these things and making analogies. I, I want to find everything in the word of God. So go to Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And this is a situation that the disciples find themselves in, um, like many of us find ourselves in, is that God's calling us to go to the deep, but then some unexpected things happen on the way. And I just want to walk through this biblical story and see if we can find out some things that will help people who will dwell in the deep. Somebody say, I will will. dwell in the deep. Now, now what I'm asking you right now is to make the decision that you're going to go deeper this year, even before you know any of the obstacles that are in the deep. I I need you to make a decision before you detour. And that's what God, I believe, is asking us on the first week or the first month or the first series of 2021 is decide before you detour. Do you know most of the dumb things that I did were because I had decided and then I detoured when an obstacle came up. And God is telling somebody right now, that your decision is stronger than the detour. If you would stay committed to your decision, the detours can come, but you will keep going forward. And in this moment, the disciples are going to be faced with a decision in the midst of a detour. Uh, Let me just read it. It says, as evening came, Jesus said to the disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out. Today, I'm talking to people who are deep dwellers, and I want to give you some points if you're going to dwell in the deep. If you're going to dwell in the deep, don't ever forget your anchor. Now, I want you to see this. We learned last week that Jesus is our anchor. Somebody just say, Jesus is my anchor. Okay, so if Jesus is my anchor, And we're the disciples. And Jesus said, let's cross to the other side. It then says something that trips me out. I thought verse 36 would say, so they went to the other side. But look at the first four words. It says, so they took Jesus. Now, what that makes me understand is even if God gives an instruction and he's the one that told you start that job. He's the one that told you, take your kids to that school. He's the one that told you to get into that relationship. You still have a decision if you're going to take him to the place he instructed you to go. I need you to see. It said, and Jesus said, let's set out and go to the other side. So the disciples then said, they took Jesus. And the question that I have for you is did Jesus give you an instruction that was taking you to the deep, but you forgot your anchor at the shore? What I'm telling is you take Jesus with you. Take him to school. Take him to work. Take him to the basketball court. Take him to the boardroom. All I'm telling you is do not go anywhere and forget your anchor. And the problem is there are many people in the deep with no anchor. You're screaming, I'm going to dwell in the deep. But you forgot Jesus at 21 days of prayer and fasting. As soon as the 22nd day came, 
you were back to everything that you used to do and worse before. I just got to be honest with you that you went 21 steps forward and you took 31 steps back in three days. Why? It's because you went without the anchor. And the thing that you got to understand is your anchor or Jesus is not for attraction. Your anchor is always for action. Jesus does not want to be the impressive part of your life. He wants to be the impactful part of your life. He doesn't care that everybody's impressed that you know scripture. That's what Sadducees and Pharisees were. There are people who knew the law and knew what the right thing were doing, but it didn't show up in their life. And what I'm telling you today is God saying, let me be the anchor that actually makes a difference in your life. Let me be the anchor that actually changes the way that you forgive people. Let me be the anchor that actually allows you to be generous when your nature is to be selfish. Jesus doesn't want to be impressive. He wants to be impactful. And if that's Jesus' stance, that might need to be yours. Some of y'all are trying to be so impressive, ain't doing nothing. And God said, I'd rather you be impressive to nobody and impactful to everybody. We've made a decision as a church. Pastor Mike, why y'all ain't came back yet? Why you ain't done this? You need to start doing this and you need to start doing that. And da 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 Do you know all the opportunities that are out here and what the church could be doing? And da 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 Baby, we're not listening to you. I'm sorry. If anybody needs to leave the church because we're not open yet, God bless you. I will send a letter of recommendation to the next church that you go to and tell them you have very strong opinions. But what I'm telling you right now is that I'm not moving because I'm not trying to impress you. I'm anchored on what God has told me and he knows how to get my attention and tell me something different. And so until he tells me to do something different, I don't care if you're not impressed. But I promise you, you can't stop me from being impactful. You can't stop. There's thousands of people right now in their home getting delivered the word of God so that they can transform. What would the world look like if we stopped caring about being impressive and doubled down on being impactful? I got to move. God doesn't want to be the anchor in your life for just attraction. Can I show it to you? I saw this picture of a yacht. Can you put it up for me real quick? Now, this is a yacht that costs more than all of our houses put together. Let's be very clear. All of our houses put together in this room and probably some of y'all's online. This yacht costs more than that. Now, when you look at this yacht, millions of dollars, there are very sexy parts of this yacht. Like the sexy part is the glass and that little nose and and the upper decks and the lower decks and they got even another little boat off to the side. But do you know the most impactful part of this boat? Is the anchor. Now I want you to look and see where the anchor actually is at this current moment. look, Look at it. The anchor is positioned not to impress anybody. It's position to hold you in the midst of a storm. I'm asking you to be a husband that is not trying to impress his college buddies. Uh, But be an anchor for your family that may not be as impressive on the ground. But you're impacting the next generation to love and lead their families. I'm about to preach this thing right now. I'm asking you, young lady, not to do the silhouette challenge and be impressive with your body. They don't even want to know what's in your mind no more because you've shown them everything that's under your clothes. But what I'm telling you right now is that you could be more impactful than impressive. And it's time for the church. I'm about to preach right now. It's time for the church to make a decision. That it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if anybody thinks what we're doing is good or not. It matters that we actually do what God's told us to do. Somebody say impact. That's what 2021 is going to be prophetically for many of you. And I I really need to move on. But I I just found out that Jesus 
was more intentional about impacting the disciples in this moment than he was about impressing the crowds. He had just left the crowds, and now he's about to take the disciples. Everybody say deeper. deeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark 36, part B, it says, leaving the crowds behind. See, when you're going to not be <laughs> impressive, that means you're going to have to divorce your identity from the crowd. Leaving the crowds behind. I need to give you this point because some of you won't be able to make it past this moment if I don't give it to you. If you're going to dwell in the deep, your boat is not built for everybody. Leaving the crowds, what did I say? Behind. The Bible says distinctly that other boats followed, but it said that the boat that Jesus had started them out on, everybody was not able to get on that boat. I bet there was a lot of people in the crowd that wanted to get on the boat when Jesus said, hey, I got a mission for us. Let's go to the other side. And literally, they said they moved out, leaving the crowd behind. I keep saying leaving the crowd behind because I believe that God is asking some of you to do that very thing if you're going to dwell in the deep. Leave the crowd behind. Who is on your boat who's weighing you down? Everybody's not going to the deep with you. And you will delay your destination trying to bring a committee to what God called you to. Do you know where I would be right now if I waited for everybody that I thought was supposed to be with me to come with me on this journey? Do you know how many people would still be wandering and drifting if I needed the cosign of everybody else when I already had the cosign of heaven? Your boat is not built for everybody. And the most spiritual thing that you may do this year, because you're going to the deep, is delete them. I'm not talking about if you see them out, you don't, you don't say hello and be cordial. And I'm not talking about cancel culture. I'm talking about concentrated culture. Do you know that if you are distracted, you cannot reach your destiny in adequate time? And so what God is telling you right now is I don't want you to be into cancel culture. I need you to be in concentrated culture. Do you know when a horse, a thoroughbred runs in the Indy, uh, not Indy 500, what do they call it? The Preakness or the, um, um, what is it called? The Kentucky Derby, those horses are worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. They have a $15 piece of equipment that they put on their eyes to allow the peripheral vision to be cut off so that they can be concentrated on their lane and the finish line. And I believe that in this year, God is asking us to be concentrated on our lane and the finish line. And that means that everybody can't get on the boat and go to the deep. Well, what do I do, Pastor Mike? I thought, I thought Bobo Nim was going to come with me. I thought Tremaine was going to be able to make this trip. I already got a ring. I already got a ring. I bought her a ring already, Pastor Mike. Are you asking me to get on this boat? and go alone? Are you asking me to actually wait on you? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> anybody out there, anybody out there? Anybody? I will trust you, I will trust you, I will trust you. This sucks, this sucks, this sucks. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by his toe. Miss Mary, Mac, 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 all dressed in black, black, black. Purify, purify. I wanna be consumed. You came from heaven to earth. 
to show me something. Because the deep feels stupid. The deep doesn't have friends. The deep is calling me to be separate, consecrated, refined, sanctified. See, these are, these are words in the Bible that we skip over. Like these are when we talk about the blessings, we talk about all that. But then when he says that he will be the one to take us through every storm of life. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever been in a storm before? When you were waiting on God, doing the thing he asked you to do, and then out of nowhere, a storm happens? Can I ask you this question? How many people, can we be honest? We're hot at this church, humble, open, and transparent. How many people in some area of your life are in a storm right now? Come on, hands lifted all over the world. You're in a storm right now. What happens... When Mark 4.37 comes up, that I left the crowd, I decided to go to the deep, and this should be easy now because you are with me, right? And look what verse 37 is, the whole point of this message. But soon, a fierce storm came up. No, <laughs> no, that's, that's, no, 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 no. That's not possible. It's not possible that I obeyed God. It's not possible that the season was just calm. That's not possible that I trusted God. I gave him the crazy faith offering. I keep showing up. And then Jesus is the one that told me to go to the other side. He is the one that told me to move to Tulsa. He's the one that told me to go to that school. He's the one that told me. And then under Jesus' instructions, a fierce storm came. Has your life ever looked like a storm? Because right now, in many of your lives, that's what it feels like and that's what it sounds like. It sounds and feels like how am I out here and how I'm going to do what God asked me to do and what is going on in my life and I'm out here and it's dark now and I'm out here and there's nobody helping me and I'm out here and I don't hear a word from God. What are you saying to me, Pastor Mike? Something you need to know if you're going to dwell in the deep is the anchor does not excuse the storm. This is the lie that so many churches and people have told you for years, and I'm going to shoot it to you straight. You can have Jesus and have a storm. It's better to see it coming than to allow yourself to be fooled and then walk away. The storm is coming whether you have Jesus or not. Your marriage will be tested whether you pray in tongues or not. Your children will have to be taught whether you fast or not. I feel God right now. You will have a challenge that you're going to have to believe God for. whether you read the word every day or not. I'm going to keep the storm going because this is what many of your whole last year look like. And what we try to do is get down and make a better situation for ourselves. Let me roll my way into another, another school. Let me roll my way into a better relationship. Let me roll my way. Let me roll my way into a new church. You've been to 42 churches and the storm has not subsided. It might mean because God's trying to teach you something in the storm. I need to be even more transparent with you because I, I feel like many people have never done this for you, so I'm going to do it for you. Jesus does not excuse the storm. 
But can I tell you, Jesus usually escorts you into the storm. God, I thought, hold on, God, I thought you was doing something. I thought you was, hold on, no, 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 I'm in the middle. Hold on, oh, no, I'm in the middle. How do I get out of? I, I'm your anchor. Trust and know that I am God. Be still and wait on me. God, I can't. I can't see daylight. I don't understand why you didn't just tell me to stay on the shore. Because God said the blessings in the deep. Can I prove it to you? Jesus, after he was baptized in water, what ended up happening is that God came down and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And then guess what happened? He was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. He was escorted by God. Some of y'all been calling your storm a devastation. And God said that this is just the destination that I have to create in you. Oh, I feel this thing. The character, the stamina, the wherewithal, the stick to itiveness that you need to be everything I've called you to. And right now, I bet on day 21, Jesus was like, yo, is the storm over yet? And I bet on day 31, he said, is the storm over yet? And some of you have been living in this place in your life. Is the storm over yet? Is the storm going to subside? And for some reason, God doesn't take you out of the storm. He sustains you in the middle of it. I'm trying to show you a practical example of what having an anchor does. And can I tell you something? If you're going to dwell in the deep, listen and write this point down. The deep is not for devastation. It's for preparation. The darkest and deepest places of my life have prepared me for the greatest victories of my life. I remember when me and Natalie had good credit. And we were in a place to be able to buy our first home. And it was sunny sky everywhere. And we got hooked up with a bad contractor. And what ended up happening is we found ourselves in the smack dab middle of a storm. And for three years, my credit went down. We were drained of tens of thousands of dollars. Nobody knew Pastor Mike. I didn't have no books. I didn't have no nothing. I felt like every day God was letting the storm continue to pound on my life. And I was like, God, why? I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm giving. I'm serving the youth. I'm serving Bishop. And God said, this is not a place of devastation. This is a place of preparation. It was in those moments that I learned the tools and the trades that I needed to be able to purchase the Spirit Bank event center that we sit in right now. He knew that if I went through the storm in a season where it was inconsequential, that he would sustain me and I would come out better. And at the other side, it would be the very thing I needed to reach purpose. Maybe you need to rename your storm. Yeah, it sucks, but this is going to be sanctifying. Yeah, it's hard, but somehow healing's coming out of this. John 16, said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. Can I say it a different way? In this world, you will have a storm, but take heart. I, your anchor, have overcome. Somebody better help me shout in the place today. If you know that our anchor has overcome the world. So dear brothers and sisters, James 1, verse 2 and 4. When troubles or storms of any kind. Oh, that means I can have a storm in my marriage? Any kind of storm. 
A storm of insecurity, any kind of storm. A storm of financial poverty, any kind of storm. Dear brothers and sisters, when storms or troubles of any kind come your way, uh-oh, you want to reframe it? Consider it an opportunity for great joy. Hold on. Is my storm a joyful situation? According to the word of God, my storm should bring me joy. Because if I know when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let me admonish you like James, let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. What I started saying to myself in the midst of the storm. Because what happened is sometimes you think like I got used to the storm. And then the lights go dark. And then the stuff that used to be very, very clear and that you could see. Then it gets, it gets a lot darker. Yeah, yeah, turn all of this off. Turn this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what you think is that now I've learned how to deal in the storm. And now I've learned how to communicate and, and work in the storm. But then it gets darker. And then, come on, keep going. Like, then all I see and hear is the voice of the enemy. And I see how they're doing good. And I see their marriage succeeding. And this little light of mine is not shining. And then Mark 4, 37 said, high waves <laughs> were breaking into the boat <laughs> and it began to fill with water. So the storm got more intense and the lightning started to go and the things started to begin to be more and I'm about to lose my house and my family doesn't want to invite me places anymore and things are starting to rock and starting to reel and things are not looking brighter but it's looking darker and I don't know what's happening. Where is Jesus? Have you ever said where is Jesus? Look what verse 38 tells us Jesus was doing. Give me a little light on myself. Jesus was at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. No. Jesus was sleeping. The greatest storm of my life is happening. And Jesus had a Flintstone pillow and took residence. I, 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 I need you to see this. I'm trying to navigate in the midst of a shaky situation. Y'all know when the storm is happening, nothing's sure. Where's Jesus? <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah, that's going to be a hit. That's going to be a hit. <clears throat> What happens when Jesus has decided to sleep? What happens when Jesus has decided to sleep in the midst of your storm? Do you still trust him? Will you still wait on him? And people are saying, yeah, right now. But there's a lot that goes into Trusting a God who seems idle when your situation is so dark. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Don't you care that everything around me is shaking? 
and Jesus wakes up. Is this what y'all woke me up for? Who told you to go to the other side? Y'all missed it. Is this what you woke me up for the storm? That when I told you we were going to the other side, I'm the God of all knowing. So I knew there would be a storm and I decided to sleep in it. God may have not caused it, but he sure will use it. He knows that the storms are coming. And he slept. And what this told me is that if I'm a dwell in the deep, never trust an anchor with anxiety. If the thing that you're attached to is scared to, if your governmental party that you've attached all your weight to is scared to, if your mama and your daddy and your money is funny and everything you've attached, if your anchor has anxiety, that is the wrong anchor. This scripture made me respect Jesus' gangster like never before. That the storm did not take him off of his game. That through the storm, he remained in a state of, everybody say peace. peace. There is a way that you can have peace in the middle of the storm. Y'all don't want to hear the word today, but I'm telling you right now. God is the only one. He gave us a forever picture of him sleep and resting in a place where everybody else was freaking out. And God's saying to me, I hear this so strongly. I will give you peace. Lift your hands all over the world right now. I need you to lift your hands. I feel this so strong. Some of you are in a storm that is challenging everything that you've ever believed. And God said, the storm's not going to stop yet, but I'll give you peace immediately. The storm is not going to subside yet. Yeah, you're still going to have to go through marriage counseling. And yeah, you're still going to have to take your children to therapy. And yeah, you're still going to have to go back and build your credit. And yeah, you're still going to have to stay in that smaller apartment and you're not going to get the house yet. And yeah, you're still going to have to catch the bus. And yeah, but I will be your peace in the middle of the storm. It says when Jesus woke up, hey, storm, stop. Oh, y'all didn't see it in the Bible? And it said, silence, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped. And there was a great calm that came. Oh, I got some encouragement for somebody today. If you're going to dwell in the deep, ah, through the rain, the anchor remains. I need you to hear me say this. The reason why I believe God gave us the word this year to be anchored is because we can't rebuke the storm away. Only God can do that. But I'm still here after the storm subsided. Are you telling me that after the situation, I may not have gotten to my destination when I wanted to? But I'm still here. Somebody say, I'm still here. Could you think back over what the last five years has been for you? And then could you with faith in your heart and gratitude all over say, I'm still here? I'm about to start a revolution of thanksgiving and gratitude. Do you know what the doctor's report said? And do you remember what was in your bank account? And do you remember when they told you that you would never be able to get into that school? And do I feel a praise rising up all over the world. And do you remember that God told you that he would sustain you? Somebody shout at me, I'm still here. As we're about to celebrate six years being a church, they told me that it would never amount to anything. And they told me that we wouldn't be able to build a multi-ethnic and a multi-generational and a multicultural church. But we're still So your testimony should be, God, you sustain. That song we're singing is a prophetic gratitude 
to what God is calling us to do as a church is put our faith in him. When I wrote those words, God told me I'm going to sustain you in the middle of it all. And if you're going into the deep, I need you to realize something. (laughs) That your trust needs to be more in your anchor, Jesus, than it is in the storm. Some of us trust that the storm is going to take us out more than we trust that Jesus is going to keep us through the storm. And I'm asking you to change your focus. Do you remember when Peter was walking on water? And he began to do something that nobody else had ever done. And it was when he began to pay attention to the winds and the waves. To the storm that was around him. That he began to sink. And what did Jesus say? Oh, Peter. Why you got so little faith, bro? You don't remember? I told you. I'm the one that said, come. I'm the one that called you to be in that marriage. I'm the one that told you your son was going to be healed. I'm the one. I'm the one who said your family would be saved. I'm the one that said this was the last year you would deal with depression. I'm the one that said anxiety will no longer have a hold over you. I'm the one that said that everything that happened to you in that molestation would not define everything that you would be in the future. I'm the one who said it. I feel the presence of God. I'm the one who said, though you had years of wrong images through pornography, that I can purify your heart and make you somebody that will change people for the rest of their life. I'm the one. And today God's asking, why won't you trust me? That's what he asked the disciples. He said, then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still not have faith? Do you still not trust that I'm big? You still here. I still sustain you. Why don't you trust me? Well, God, because I didn't see you. Let me help you. Let, 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 Let me help you understand the visibility of an anchor does not determine the value of an anchor. God, I don't see you. He said, because I'm working it out right now. God, I don't see you. It's because I'm under doing a work. An anchor doesn't have to be seen to actually be doing the work. And God says, some of the areas you want me to show up in, I'm not because I'm doing a work that's deeper. That's what God's doing in my life. He's doing a deep work. He's making me confront things I don't even want to talk about. He's making me be transparent about the reasons why and the hurts and what happened and all of these things. I said, God, I don't feel you. And he just says, stay anchored because I'll sustain you. What, what are you trying to say, Pastor Mike? What are you trying to say? What I'm, what I'm really trying to get you to understand at this current moment is in verse 41, it says the disciples were absolutely terrified when Jesus said, stop, peace, be still. And then they started looking at each other and was like, who is this man? No, I thought we knew him. Like when we left our boats, like I thought we knew what he was going to do. I mean, we saw him do the water and the wine trick and we was like, oh, we're going to get tipsy. Like, but we thought that that was going to be it. But who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey him? I want to let you know if you're going to dwell in the deep, deep, our anchor has authority. Jesus is the only one that can look at the wind and the waves. Can I break that down for you? Let me give you some revelation. He can look at the waves, which you do see, and look at the winds, which were invisible. He can look at the marriage that you do see and the underlying insecurity that's undetectable. He can speak to the 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 financial situation that you do see but the mindset of poverty that you don't see my God is the only one that looks at the visible and the invisible and he can say peace be still money line up mindset change pornography go down but perversion be subsided God looks at what you do see and what you don't see And he has the authority to speak to both of them. 
That means God's not working the situation out in one dimension. He's working it out in 2D. What you see and you don't see, he'll be the anchor in that situation.